Hi everybody, so I'm back on the boat alone. Uh, Melissa is still at home with Ollie and Jack, although I think they're coming here either later today or tomorrow, so they will be in this episode, I think. Um, as promised, this week uh, I'm going to tackle that horrible, disgusting mess down there. And what do I mean by the horrible, disgusting mess down there? Well, under this part of the floor, the bottom of the companionway, uh, there's a bilge where the original batteries were, these ones. And as you saw last week, these lithium, these um, uh, leisure batteries have been replaced with the lithium. So that area is now empty, except for the starter battery, which I can remove easily. And underneath the battery tray is the engine bilge, or the front end, the forward end of the engine bilge, and also the uh, long range diesel tank, which eventually we're gonna have to recommission. So I'm standing on top of the diesel tank, and there's the um, starter battery behind me and my job is to get all of this out and get it thoroughly cleaned because over the years bits of diesel and bits of oil and what have you have dripped down there and it stinks. So I'm going to have a quick cup of tea which now I can do using the electric kettle running off the inverter. Right a lot of cleaning to do. That there, what you're looking at now, that is the Keel diesel tank. This was the battery tray. This is where the batteries were. You can see there's a bilge pump under there and you can see there's the takeoffs for the diesel tank there. I'm gonna to have to get the rest of that bilge water out. I've got some barrels to pump it out and uh, get this whole area nice and clean because that's, that's what's causing the smell in the boat. So there's two bilge pumps down here. There's this one, which is an autumn, it's an electric bilge pump, but I don't think it has a float switch on it. It's manual sort of switch only. And then there's the pipe going down to this Henderson hand pump. Um, but they all need to come out really because it's just disgusting down there and I've got to get it clean. So they're going to need to be undone and come out. And then I just hope the boat doesn't spring a leak while I've got all the bilge pumps removed. I mean, there's no reason to suspect this boat is going to suddenly spring a leak. Uh, it's been, it's sat here leak free for a, a decent amount of time. So I can't see it being a big problem. Ich, 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 ich. Yeah, I think the next thing actually is get, get the little, um, get that little uh, whale pump on a stick down there and empty the rest into the, into a barrel. Also, I'm hoping that I find Paul's uh, 10 mil socket down there because uh, when Paul was working on the boat, he dropped his 10 mil socket down there and um, eventually I'll get it back. This is the nifty little bilge pump that I made several weeks ago, which is just one of those whale pumps. Don't get the Amazon cheap copies, they're not worth it. A whale pump on the end of a piece of stainless steel uh, box section with the tube going up the middle and a couple of, um, a couple of crocodile clips on and it means that I can very easily get the bilge pump to the very bottom of where I need to get to the bottom of those tanks and the bottom of those bilges so let's get to the bottom of this bilge first Mark could have done one of these on that warum he's working on and there we go that's slowly emptying that bilge into the into the barrel I, I've got 90% of the water and, and stuff out of this bilge in the bottom of the tank but inevitably some of what in there is in there is actually like oily sludge and that little whale pump thing just won't do it so I've been in the, the, and the annoying thing is is I've got uh, a pump at home specifically for transferring oil and doing oil changes and that kind of thing um, so uh, but of course it's at home been and bought that from the local local chandlery which is a, um, a jiggler, but I don't think that's going to do the job. It says it's suitable for petrol, diesel, water and all sorts of stuff. But I think that the receptacle, the receiving container has to be lower than the, uh, than the tank that I'm emptying. And of course it's in the keel. I've also been and bought one of these, which is a, a liquid transfer pump, which says it will do uh, oil and water. And I've bought one of these, which also says it will do oil and water. So between them, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm not sure how successful this one's going to be because I don't know how long it's not got very long reach, has it? Well, 
Well, that's uh, useless. That just jammed up instantly. What about this? This says intake and discharge system. Tra intake and discharge transfer system transfers liquids rapidly. Pumps any any air. Pumps air or liquid. Right, you get down there. It's not working, so I'm going to drive back home and fetch the pump that I should have brought with me in the first place. And what's really annoying is if I'd just gone home to get the pump in the first place, I wouldn't have to waste two hours. Or what's even more annoying is if I'd just bought the pump with me in the first place. Well, the guy on the boat over there heard me chuntering to camera walking up the, up the pontoon and said, oh, I've got one of those pumps. <laughs> so it saved me driving all the way back to Putelli. So this is the jobby, a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more of a beast. This is, this is getting silly. Uh, that pump didn't work either, so I'm really glad I didn't drive all the way home for it. Um, next thing, it's about getting down to the bottom of that. I mean, I can get down there with a mop, I suppose, but that's gonna be my last resort, is to actually just mop it out, one mop at a time. I'm gonna try the super soaker. I've used this to great, um, uh, to, very, uh, to very great effect to empty bilges before now because you can get right down the bottom and suck it out and then push that into the uh, into the can instead. Let's see if this works. All right. That's working. I think what's happened is whoever at some point and maybe at several points people have changed the oil on this engine by just letting the oil from the bilge, from the sump go straight down into the bilge which is a, an appalling way to do it um, but there it is this is disgusting Out of the fuel tank as well while we're here. Something else I've got to do is swap this anchor. So what we've got on the front here is um, an old school delta. There's nothing wrong with the delta anchor. Uh, and they hold quite well, but they're not a patch on the kind of modern, modern what do they call them, generation two or next gen anchors or whatever they're called. So I'm gonna swap that because we've got our brand new Mantis M2, uh, which we bought. We're not sponsored by Mantis, we bought this, uh, but I did a lot of research into it beforehand. Um, watched the videos by Sailing Fair Isle on these designs and that kind of thing. So I'm just pulling out enough chain I'll try not to fall overboard as well, which would be a bonus. There you go. So this Lumar Delta is, I think, um, 25 kilos, I think, or 20 kilos. So this is the Mantis and it's a beast. It's, it's actually more or less a storm anchor, but we can't afford to buy lots of anchors. And I'd rather have one big chunky one than uh, something that's too small. It comes into two pieces. So this section removes from, the, the shank removes from the spade as it were, um, so that uh, you can actually flat pack this and store it below deck when you're on passage. Okay, now I can put a split pin through there. So what I've got in here is the Mantis Swivel. Right, so I'm probably not going to talk much with this section because um, there's a lot of wind. But this is how it works. And then you put the Teflon tape around the threads. Okay. 
just goes in here. And this tightens up. And then it's a matter of seizing this off now. All this comes supplied with the anchor, which is great. So I'm going to put the first piece. And, uh, and before I watched there in vi video, I thought you'd wind it all the way round in this groove, but you don't. What you do is you go round like this, and then you only do one half at a time. And they reckon two to three turns is plenty. Right, so now this can be tackled onto, onto the anchor itself. Um, hopefully I've done this right. Please tell me if I haven't. I'm sure, I'm sure the way I've done it isn't going to result in imminent catastrophic loss of my anchor. But if you see anything that I've done really badly wrong there, I'm not going to dangle that back over the nose of the boat just at the minute. It can sit on the deck quite happily. Um, but yeah, the Mantis anchor is installed and ready to go. The other thing I want to show you is the bridle and um, uh, anchoring kind of mooring ball type arrangement. So just to kind of recap, there's our Mantis M2, which is all ready to go with the anchor swivel already on. So that's fine. Yeah, you see how that works. And it can't prise these jaws apart because the jaws are inside that collar. So unlike other systems where you've got the jaws and people say that jaws can be prized apart, well, they can't on this one because all the stress is on that pin and the jaws are actually contained inside that collar. So that's amazing. The bridle has got this enormous um, uh, hook on it, which hooks onto your chain. So when you're anchoring, if you're gonna be on anchor for any length of time, you pay out your anchor and then hook this over your anchor chain, like so. That strap stops it coming off. And either of these come through either side through the normal um, uh, fair leads. And you've got the protective cover shroud over there. And then these go onto your cleats here and port and starboard. Uh, and it basically means that you're not sitting uh, with the, just the anchor chain chattering away on the roller the whole time. So that's miles better. And then for picking up a mooring ball, the center's this, which is like the mother of all carabiners. Uh, so you can whack that onto a mooring ball uh, and tie onto that, which should make life a lot easier as well. Awesome. I can't even reach down there, even with a litter picker. There's a torch. So the other thing I've got to um, inspect this bilge under the engine and inside the tank with is this, which is a digital um, endoscope. So let's have a look. I've put an SD card in there. About the engine bilge. This one's a little bit more tricky to get into. I can't see Paul's socket but it must be there. My plan now is to remove as much of this uh, pipe work and bilge pump pipes and all that kind of stuff that I can uh, to make as good access as possible down there. If we spring a leak, then we've got a problem, but I don't see why we should. We're sat here quite nicely and there's no logical reason, but my uh, my paranoid brain is saying, what happens if the boat starts sinking now? I, I guess I'll just have to put a bilge pump back on really, really quickly, uh, but that shouldn't be too difficult.
Well, that's the bilge pumps out, the bilge pipes out the way, the bilge pump pipes out the way. Um, I should be able to access that area under the engine. Oh, there's one more pipe here. Hang on. There you go. That's the, this is the one. All this stuff's pretty, pretty rank and disgusting. And then I've actually got a battery um, jet washer, uh, which I'm going to put a barrel of, um, or half a barrel of water and jet wash out the engine bay with the, uh, so it's not like a, it's not like an industrial pressure washer, which would make them a hell of a mess, but it's uh, powerful enough to sort of get in there and uh, get in there and uh, give it a clean. Yay, look at that. I've got Paul's socket from his socket set and it's it's a 19, not a not a 10. Um, ugh, that's disgusting. So we're gradually getting there. The bilge is getting cleaner, and it it's got an attachment for a hose pipe on the underneath, which is great. But you don't have to put a hose pipe to it. What I've got here is I've got it going into a drum of fresh water, which is standing in the cockpit. That, that's going to take a while, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. This is worth using for this job, definitely. In an effort to kind of uh, boost YouTube earnings, which are not that significant, um, and in the process of giving up my day job as a paramedic, um, which I haven't done yet, I'm still working full time as a paramedic, but I'm now um, offering guitar lessons online via Zoom. So if you want to have uh, guitar lessons with me, private one-to-one -one guitar lessons via Zoom, uh, drop us an email uh, to the email that's on the screen now and uh, I'll get straight back to you as soon as possible and we'll set something up. So this is very much kind of seat of the pants thing. I haven't set up a website. I haven't kind of set up some expensive platform for doing this. I'm just offering one-to-one -one private guitar lessons uh, over Zoom or whatever suits you, whatever video format seems to work for us. But yeah, drop me an email to the email that's on the screen and we'll set it up if you're interested. It's just another way of generating some income to kind of support the uh, whole project and support our family being able to go off and earn as we sail. Look at this, it's a big difference. It's not, I wouldn't eat my dinner off it, but it's the bilge of a boat after all. And it means that I can actually start to get these um, old attachments off the old tank and start to disassemble that next time. Again, that's not, it's not part of today's mission. Today's mission is give this a clean and try and get the smell gone. Um, so, yeah, that's a lot better. I'm just boiling another kettle of water um, and I'm just kind of scrubbing it down and cleaning it down and wiping it down. And then obviously I've got this drum here so anything that comes out of the bilge goes into the drum to get rid of <sighs> it's kicking my ass though so physical because i can't just kind of reach down there because you've got all of all of this stuff in the way and oh, it's just anyway i'm moaning <laughs> sorry a little bit more mopping later and um uh, looks like that uh i'm just going to flash up a before and after pic so you can see the difference you can see i have i have achieved something here um it's just uh what I think I might do for the actual diesel tank, because uh, I've, I've emptied that. The diesel tank is empty and I've mopped it out with some detergent and boiling water. Um, but it's not, again, I wouldn't eat my dinner off it, but it's pretty clean. We're going to lift out um, in a bit to replace all the skin fittings and all the through holes and put some new anodes on and things like that. It'll only be a short lift, but it might be a case that it's best to get that tank pressure washed when we get that when we do the lift out in a few weeks.
The electrical upgrades on Ocean Melody are an ongoing job. So far we've finished installing the lithium batteries, the Victron inverter charger and the main fuse boards. But as I had a little time left over I wanted to add a couple more pieces to the puzzle. So yeah, right, I've installed two more components to the ever increasing bank of electrical gubbins. I have installed a low draw 12 volt um, ground bus bar, negative bus bar, and this fuse board which is for non-switched stuff. So what, what, what do I mean by non-switched stuff? I mean stuff that when I turn this off like that I want my bilge pumps and my electric lighting to still have power going to them. So yeah what's on there is cabin lights, there isn't a sticker saying emergency cabin lights but emergency cabin lights, bilge pump 2, bilge pump 1, VHF, emergency instruments and emergency just general electronics so I can take anything to those that I want to still have power even when I've turned the rest of the boat off. I've just been having a look at uh, the to-do list uh, which isn't as big as you'd think. Two or three weeks ago we did an episode about something like uh, called uh, what next or what have you and uh, this to-do list is kind of a derivative of that. I'll show you what we've achieved. So these can the, the things in orange are the things that I've done over the last over today really. So I'm going to call that done. Uh, let's go like that. Oops. A different shade of green. Uh, that one, bikes for transport. We've got a folding bike and we've got the Hemiway um, that I demonstrated last time. So they're now sorted. Um, and then clean the engine bilge, done. Long range diesel tank, cleaned out. Mantis anchor, bridle and swivel, sorted. So that's our list already for what we were you know the critical can't leave without that list let me show you that full screen look at that that's not bad is it you know we're getting there we're definitely getting there so that's me done for another week um melissa and jack and ollie didn't make it down to the boat in the end melissa's been feeling really rough all day so uh forgive her for not turning up thanks very 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 much for watching um, it's just been all boat work this week, uh, so no babies, uh, no family dramas, uh, none of me whinging about my health conditions, sorry guys. Um, but yeah, just all boat work and we've got the boat looking better and uh, cleaner and smelling a lot better, at least smelling a lot better than I do, because uh, I stink. I'm going to go home and have a shower. But thank you so, so much for watching. Click the subscribe button and then um, you're then a subscriber to the channel. And if you click the little notification bell, it tells you with each episode when they come out. And if you don't click the notification bell, you won't get the annoying notifications. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, so, but if you can subscribe, that'd be awesome. If not, then just leave us a, a message and a, and a comment in, uh, in the comments section. We always like to read those and we do respond to as many as we possibly can. Um, and give us a like or a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Can you even do thumbs down these days? Have they got rid of that from YouTube? Maybe you can't even do thumbs down. But yeah, thanks very much again, guys. And we'll see you next time. Till then, bye-bye.